Hi, this is Hazel Marie and welcome to my craft room. I'm excited about today's uh, project tutorial because it's something I've wanted to do for about a year and a half. Um, I bought some of the materials I needed but I just didn't have the time to get around uh, to finish it. Uh, at the first of the uh, tutorial, uh, I know that you saw a finished product and it was the first frame of two because I want them to go on either side of a sideboard here in my craft room and I wanted them to be identical. If you notice um, this particular frame um, and the other one, they're both painted white and then they have a distressing on them. Um, I happen to want one uh, that was um, a rectangle but you can use any size that you want, any shape that you want. It can be oval, round, square, uh, oblong. It can be any size that you want it to be. I bought this from a store called Garden Ridge. Uh, they have changed their name now to At Home. I don't know if you have one of those in your area or not, but frames are easily picked up. Uh, sometimes they run them on sale at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, for like 40% off. And sometimes they're just on sale. So uh, kind of check your stores. Plus, you may have something, and you may not need two. You may just want one frame. Um, on the back of this particular frame, it has chipboard. And uh, you will see as we get through covering um, with uh, the cloth and the lace that this final piece, putting it back on and locking it back in place, gives you a finished look to your project. And that's what you want. So let me put this aside. And we're going to talk about what we're going to need for this project. Now, let me zoom in a little bit closer uh, so that uh, you can see a little bit better. And um, here we go. Okay. Now, what I have, uh, let me adjust my camera just a little bit so get it into frame. Uh, what I have chosen is some fabric. And this is just a lightweight fabric. In fact, um, I bought this at Goodwill. Uh, I don't know if that's nationwide or if it's just here in Texas, but it was an old bed skirt. So it's a used piece of fabric. I brought it home. I washed it. I've cut it up and I've almost used all of it. It just makes a nice um, background for my lace. Now, this is the lace that I've chosen. Now, this particular piece of lace, my sister gave that to me. And um, when she moved, she decided that she did not want lace curtains anymore. And so she gave me her curtains, and they're beautiful and a good grade. Uh, I washed it. And uh, not that it was dirty, but because my sister uses a lot of um, fragrance uh, in her uh, rent cycle. And um, I, I really don't, I don't like that smell. So I actually uh, rewashed mine. But that's just a side note. Okay, in addition to the fabric and the lace, I have some flat lace. And this is the one uh, that I'm using. And also along with it is this particular piece. I also bought this at Goodwill. And it was a, actually a uh, window um, curtain for like a kitchen. And it had apples. And if you notice, these two pieces kind of go together. Well, in the middle was apples. And I thought, I'm never going to use a piece of lace with apples. So I sat down and I cut all this out. And yes, it took a little time, but it was well worth it because you can see it's a very pretty lace. And I actually ended up with three yards of each one. So we're going to be using that. You, of course, can use any lace that you want. Um, it will also depend on how much lace you need as to how big your frame is. Um, another thing that I have is um, this case knife um, or butter knife whatever you want to call it it's a little serrated knife but I'm going to use it to pry back um, the closures on the back of my frame and uh, don't want to use my nails for that uh, so I've got that I also have some tiny little flowers down here uh, that you're going to need um, it can be buttons uh, little flowers pearls anything that you want to use I have um, a large and a smaller flower and kind of a cream with just a blush on it. And then, in addition to that, I have some carnations. And these came off of a, a flower bush. And uh, then there's a little rose. Over here, I have um, some additional um, flower material that I'm going to be using. And um, then I also have... 
some paper uh, flowers that I'm going to be using in two different sizes. This, um, the larger size, and then the smaller, smaller size, like this. And then I have just extra leaves uh, that I'll be using. In addition to all that, I'm going to use a pair of cloth scissors. Don't want to cut paper with those. And then I have a pair of paper scissors. And you'll see why we're going to need that in just a minute. Um, I have uh, lace in a, a beautiful green and beautiful pink. And um, I have a larger lace. And I have some pearls. Now all of this is up to you. Whatever your color scheme is, that's what you want to use. I'm going to use uh, pink, white, and green. And then I'm going to need pearls to put on top of my lace. So I have a, a lot of uh, pink pearls. I am also going to need to use my glue gun. I use my glue gun a lot. So make sure you have plenty of glue when you do this project. Uh, in addition, I did forget one item. You are going to need um, paper to cover um, the cardboard in the front of your frame if it's like mine. And it is um, it has cutouts in it and it has a dark background. Well, I am going to put these end to end. I'm going to glue them onto uh, that piece of cardboard and I'm going to tape, tape them on the front so that they don't kind of go up like this and I'll show you that in just a minute um, and I'm going to make sure that they're the exact same size as the insert cardboard that I have in my frame and we'll get to that in just a minute and it, it will make a lot more sense but that's what we're going to be needing so I'm going to push all of this to the side and we are going to get started now, whatever, like I said, whatever colors you like, whatever size you like, that's fine. But, whatever you do, remember this. If you're going to make two items that look just alike, or they're on either side, uh, let's say mine's on either side of a, uh, uh, a sideboard, and uh, I have like the top of the sideboard decorated and I have up the wall decorated and you'll see that in the photograph uh, that I have posted. Now make sure that whenever you do your first one that you say one for this one and one for this one. You don't want to get in the middle of your project and find out oh I put five flowers over here but I only have three left. So what you want to do if you're making them exactly the same Make sure that you have the same number of flowers, the same number of pearls. You want to want them to mimic one another. You want them to be um, exactly the same. Now, if you don't want yours to be the same, don't worry about it. But I did. So I counted out all the numbers that I needed of everything. <laughs> um, that may not be your thing. Hey, that's okay. This is your project. You can do it however you want to. But that's how I do it. And uh, that way, whenever I start my project, I know that I have all the materials I'm going to need. Now, uh, let me get a little more centered here. I think that's a little bit better. Uh, we're going to take our frame. And I'm going to scoot out again uh, as far as my uh, computer screen goes so that you can get a better view. Okay? Now, my frame is right here. Let me pick it up. And we are going to uh, take the frame and open it. And you're just simply, however, and yours may not be the same as mine. That's okay. Um, you may have uh, a different kind of closure on yours, but that's okay too. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to get to the glass because um, the cardboard that's directly under it, that's what we're going to be working with first. And so we need to take everything out, except the glass, of course. Now, you might want to, uh, let me make sure I'm in frame, uh, you might want to make sure that your glass is smudge free, and um, just bring a, a little bit of uh, spray cleaner or a little damp rag and a, um, uh, a little paper towel. 
and make sure that your frame is, doesn't have anything on it. Now, I do not like to use my nails for anything because my nails aren't real strong, like I said, um, due to treatments that I've had. And so, I'm going to take these out. I do not need this. And I'm going to take this piece out. Lay it aside. And I am going to get my paper towel. And I'm going to make sure that there's nothing on this glass. And you know how sometimes it just gets something on it, no matter what you do. That's just the way life is. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to set it down, making sure that my glass does not fall out. Now, if you notice on this side, it's dark. Can't use dark. That would simply show through my lace. So I'm going to flip it over. And that's why I said we needed paper. Now, I chose this one uh, because I happen to like it. Uh, and that's what I wanted to show through on my lace. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, just put some glue down. Put some glue there. And then I am going to put my paper. Line it up. Very, very good. And even with this thick, uh, thicker um, cardstock, you can actually still see uh, some of the uh, paper or the, the, the cutout part. You can see it through the paper, but that's okay because we're going to cover ours up. Now, what I wanted to do was line it up. And that's not lined up very good to tell you the truth, but I think it's going to be okay. It's not going to be a problem. And now I am going to take a piece of tape right here. Okay. And I'm going to put this tape across. The reason I'm, t I'm putting it across is not to keep it uh, taped down, but it's to keep it from going up like this. So that's all I did was I just covered it. Now, you may not need to cover yours. I did. Now, the thing is, is that we have extra, as you can see here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take our scissors, our paper scissors, that is, and we are going to uh, cut the paper off. Now, if you want to use an X-Acto knife, that's fine. I was going to use an X-Acto knife, but I guess got a little lazy and I forgot about it or something, and I didn't pull it out of my... Uh, turn uh, style over here and so it's over there and I'm over here that's okay we will just use our paper scissors and um, this little project here should not take that long but I can't seem to get my fingers in there so um, it'll take a little bit longer than I thought plus I have smaller scissors um, you do know that um, the small scissors for the newbies uh, what is what gets you into the smaller uh, areas uh, when you're cutting out or when you're fussy cutting. In fact, I have smaller scissors than this. Sometimes I use when I fussy cut. And that means when you cut out an intricate uh, piece or a piece that's printed um, or something else uh, that needs to be cut around. Uh, the larger scissors would make shorter work of this. So anyway, that's what we have. That was the front. We can't use that, but we're going to use the back side. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fabric, move my scissors for just a bit to get them out of the way. Don't too much covering because then it just kind of gets messy. Okay, now as you can see, my fabric is not cut perfectly and it's certainly not cut to size, but that's that's okay because what we're going to do is we're going to use our paper, excuse me, not our paper, but our cloth scissors. And we're going to cut it down. Does not have to be super straight. It just simply has to be um, oh, about an inch or so bigger than what we're going to put it uh, on. And as you can see, it's about an inch top and bottom, and that side. But this side over here has a little too much fabric on it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut that down too. Now, like I said, on this one, I am a I am a stickler as far as. Uh, have anything straight and uh, nice looking, but you're not going to see any of this. Um, as you can probably already start realizing, 
this is just going to be part of the underdressing. So we're going to turn this over. We're going to sort of line it up, and it doesn't have to be exact because there's no pattern on the on the front. If there were a pattern, boy, that would make a big difference, but there's not. I'm going to use my glue gun, and I'm going to pull my fabric over, glue it. On the opposite side, I'm going to do the same thing. Now, you do not want your fabric drooping, so don't stretch it to where it's like screaming, but, you know, just go ahead and pull it to where it's taut, or it's tight, as you might say. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure it looks nice. And uh, this is just a super easy project. It's all glue, and uh, there's no sewing. Uh, there is um, absolutely no reason, no matter how new you are to crafting, that you can't do this. It's just gluing. Okay? Now, okay, wrap that. Now I'm going to turn it around. I'm just going to put some glue here. And I'll put some glue over here. And then... What I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue here. Now, all we want to do is pull this up and pull this side up over here. And that's what you want. See? Finished. Okay. Now, on this end, do the same thing. Um, this is fun. Or at least I hope you think it's fun. I, I do. I... Uh, I've not been on uh, the channel very long, but I have been crafting for numerous years. A lot longer than some of you have been alive, probably. But that's okay. We all have to start, and we're all different ages, and that's fine. Okay, if you have anything that's just sticking up and just bugging you, go ahead and uh, glue it down. The thing is, is that this is going to get covered again. This time, we're going to cover with our lace. Now, whenever you cover with your lace, you can see I just have sort of a, a rectangular piece cut. And um, I want to make sure that, huh, I have a couple of little things there going on, but that's okay. Um, we have a rose, or I have a rose pattern here, and I have a rose pattern here. Now, I don't want the rose pattern going off off down here so I'm going to raise it up a little bit now I do not um, have to exactly match the one on the other side um, if it were going to be a particular pattern because we're going to be using other things that would be seen you would want to make sure that you actually cut that fabric in the same place uh, on your lace to where it comes out with the exact same pattern on both sides so, this one is pretty close. I was aware of it when I was cutting it out. But, like I said, it's not critical. And I'm going to put my pieces away so they're not cluttering my desk. Um, hmm. Okay. When we take um, some pictures and post them, you'll be able to see part of my craft room. And uh, my craft room is not real large. I guess you would call it uh, cozy. You know, that's another word for small. <laughs> and uh, I would love to have a, a craft room twice as big. I look at these people that have craft rooms. And uh, I think, oh, if I just had all that space. But um, hopefully one day I will do a video of my craft room. And you can see exactly what all I have in it. I do have a lot. But... I could use even more space to space out what I do have. Um, I think it's a great idea if you have a craft room. That was always a dream of mine. Uh, but a lot of you, I know, do not have your own craft room. And that's okay, too. You don't need that to be a crafter. All you need is a space. And I am going to... Um, uh, well, I was going to use my little new little tool that I have. I bought a spatula. I couldn't find one of those neat little things that everybody keeps uh, using. 
uh, online uh, where they have the uh, the little um, Teflon um, little thing that they use all the time. Yeah, I used it just yes, just yesterday, and I'm going, where did I put that? Well, I don't know. I have so much stuff out that I'm not really sure. So I'll just try and be real careful. Now, you will burn yourself on this, especially with lace. So do be careful. So that's why I'm kind of doing it sort of fast. You know, if you do it fast, it doesn't hurt as bad. <laughs> not really. It does hurt. I want you to be very careful. Um, especially those of you who have not worked with a glue gun before. Huh? Boy, have I had some burns, and they're not fun, I tell you. Uh, a trick, it's not really a trick, it's, it's a proven fact, that if you have aloe vera, if you burn yourself, if you'll just uh, put your hand down in cold water and get that glue off if you can, and then get an aloe vera leaf, and aloe vera is a plant, and it's a medicinal type plant. They use it for all kinds of things. They use it to drink. Um, I think you can buy uh, products that have um, uh, aloe vera in it. You can buy makeup. But it's also good for burns. So if you burn yourself, I know for a fact that if you put it on immediately, it will not even normally leave a bad spot and uh, it will take care of the uh, blisters. So that's a good thing making sure I'm in frame here. Don't want to be doing this and you not being able to see it. Okay, that's not that critical, but we're going to put some glue down there. So anyway, that's just a, a tidbit. Uh, another thing that you can use, and I did this recently when I burned myself, um, I used soy sauce. Hmm, never heard, I had read about it, but you know it worked. I had to use it a couple of times, and um, it, but it does work. And uh, you kind of smell like Chinese food, but I guess it's okay, <laughs> as long as it doesn't hurt. Okay, now I did run out of the lace on this side over here, but that's mm, okay, because I've still got enough that I can turn it under. Okay, now, as you can see, that one's done. Now, it doesn't matter that this isn't perfect. See how much lace I have down here? I wasn't very, I was talking and I wasn't paying attention. Um, and I do that sometimes. I guess we all do. Um, anyway, I'm going to turn this up. Doesn't have to be any fancy folds or anything or any present type folds or any um, kind of, um, oh, what do you call it whenever you're trying to, to make it at an angle. It doesn't have to be any of those kind of folds. I'm going to try and get some glue off of me because I do have quite a bit right now. And all you'll see on my hands are glue. Uh, it doesn't have to be cut at an angle. It doesn't have to be mitered. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, it just simply has to be covered. Oops, there's a place right there. That, oops, okay, see right there. We, err. that's okay. We're just going to pull this off. See, this glue, boy, it, it really gets a hole and it. it. holds on good. But I'm going to pull it up because it's kind of puckering on the other side. And those of you who are younger, you know what puckering means? It means there's kind of a, a bubble in your fabric. We don't want that. Okay, now, as you can see, aha, it's completed. Now, we want to take that same frame that we had a few minutes ago. Make sure that you know where your top is. It's very important uh, because everything is going to hinge on you doing it the right way. Now, I'm going to put this inside of my frame, making sure it goes inside of those little nubs or those little uh, pieces, however your frame is. You want to make sure it gets in there good and tight. Now, doesn't look too good, does it? Eh, no. Ah, here's the magic. Remember this? This is going to go over the top. Push that piece of uh, lace down in there. Because we don't want any lace sticking out, that's for sure. And we're going to put our chipboard over the top or our covering, whatever you want to call it, is fine. Um, 
and we are going to get my knife out because we do not want to break our nails. Uh, like I said, mine aren't that strong, and uh, I've been losing a lot of nails lately, breaking off, so uh, I haven't been as careful as I need to, I guess, doing different things. Okay, so what we're going to do is make sure it's down all the way around. You can see all of these little pieces sticking up. Now, starting at either end, it doesn't matter. You can start in the middle. It doesn't matter. You're going to pull them over. Okay. Make sure that cardboard's down now. Don't want it sticking up. Just go around and finish it. Some of you may be saying, oh, I know how to do that. Okay, that's great. Some of you may not know how to do that. How do you get something finished? And it makes it look nice. Okay, now let's go down here. Pull that over. And pull this over. Ow, now that hurt. Because that's a piece of metal. Whew, you don't want to do that. Fortunately, I did not cut myself. Okay, make sure they're all down. Look. Now, doesn't that look good? Yes, I have a little bit sticking out, but you know, that's not going to worry me too much. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to take my um, my cardboard off and straighten it. Okay? Now, doesn't that look great? Oops, going this way because everything's backwards on the camera. Now, on this side, I'm going to take the, you know, it's a good thing you if you take the price tag off. You don't want that shining. But I did want to tell you a little bit ago that you can get frames at not too big of a price. You want to go out. Now, wait a minute. I shouldn't say that. You may want to go out and buy a beautiful gilded frame and do some kind of artwork. Because there is some gorgeous lace out there. Uh, but I'm just saying that if you want it for a, a project that's inexpensive, you can also get um, inexpensive um, pieces of um Front, or you can get expensive frames. You can even get them at garage sales, um, at resale stores. You can get them everywhere. Um, of course, since I'm doing this on camera, you know it doesn't want to come off very well. But that's okay too. If you ever have problems uh, in the library, what we always did was we used um, alcohol. And boy, does that take it off really good. So I will worry with getting the rest of that off in a little bit. But you do not want to leave a sticker. Uh, uh, what have I got glue on me? Uh, a sticker residue on your frame. Now look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I do see a... Uh, <laughs> okay, now it's gone. You can see my light, can't you? <laughs> uh here in Texas, we need a fan. Huh. It's in the 80s. Even though some of you may be in snow areas or cold areas, uh, like my daughters, um, we're not. Uh, both of my daughters, they live in areas where it snows. Uh, if we get a snow, woohoo, boy, we are shot. And uh, we go out to play in it or <laughs> play in it. Can't really play in uh, one or two inches of snow. But uh, we still go out there and... <laughs> We have a good time. We love to see the snow falling, but we just don't have it very often. Okay, this is what we're going to actually be working on. So I'm going to turn this this way. Remember, find it where your your top is. Boy, is that important? You don't. You sure don't want to put this thing together and find out that you are in the wrong direction. That would be terrible if you made it upside down. Okay, now. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to start down here at the end, and I'm going to push this up, and let me see if I can get this to where you can see me, a or not see me, but see the project a little bit better. Let's see here. Um, let's see here if we can do this. Okay. My problem is my monitor is right there. And that's what I'm watching to make sure that I stay in frame. Okay, that's going to be as good as I can get it. Um, hopefully, that will be good. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to look at the piece that I've already completed, which is a mirror image of this. Now, if I look up there, I know what I have used. And I'm going to do the exact same thing here. Now, my problem is, is that it is on a wall and it's hung 
uh, do I have to look up? And I'm thinking, ah, I don't know if I like that. Maybe I need it a little bit closer because I have to put the same amount of flowers, top and bottom, and everything has to be the same. So I'm probably going to go ahead and get that and bring it over here. So if you'll just hold on just a moment, I'll be